Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk to you about ageism. Now certainly this is age discrimination. And there are some characteristics of older persons, and we're generally talking persons 65 years of age and older, uh, that we should uh, discuss. Uh, when it comes to the labor force, they are the fastest growing segment of our workforce. Um, we have a declining birth rate in the US, people are living longer, and the overall labor pool, even though it's somewhat shrinking, when we look to this group of older workers, they, is the, uh, they have the percentage that is increasing the most rapidly. Um, but all sorts of things happen to older workers uh, in the workplace. Generally, there is a lot of ageism out there, depending on the company, and it's often quite subtle or indirect in ways that uh, don't necessarily blatantly violate the law, but are really probably, uh, we would look at them as sort of uh, stretching it, or uh, really what we would say is unethical behavior towards older people. Um, older workers are subject to having their hours reduced as compared to say younger workers. Um, they might be discriminated against in promotions, uh, in spite of having some seniority in a company, they might be uh, told they lack drive or something. Uh, they could be told that they are not right for the job because the organization's marketing is focused on a younger target segment. So of course they couldn't identify with younger people. Um, and then some companies will even cite that there are financial costs associated with older workers as a, a reason for their ageism. Um, ageism is particularly noticeable in those industries that have sales positions. Um, it says here high incidence in the manufacturing and construction incident, uh, industries. Uh, what I, what is, we're saying here is that there's a lot of ageism in those particular industries. Um, quite often what happens to older workers at any given time, it's, it's outright, outright termination. It might be uh, unexpected on the uh, part of the recipient for certain, uh, but it might be to hire a younger worker with uh, you know, a certain amount of experience or connections. Uh, it's not uncommon at all. Other times it's harassment on the job, maybe not for managers, but maybe from fellow coworkers. Um, and so getting hired in the first place for a lot of older workers uh, and getting that meaningful uh, employment really is a, an issue and it's a serious issue. Uh, what we find is that ageism uh, cuts across all ethnicities. Uh, old is old for many employers, doesn't matter your ethnicity. And when it comes to the genders, ageism is certainly worse for women. Um, and if you're a woman of color, then it's a double whammy. So. Dealing with being old in America is not the most pleasant prospect for many people, uh, but particularly for older women and then older women of color, like I've said. Uh, the career impact uh, on older workers, uh, what we're really talking about here is that there are just a lot of stereotypes about older, older workers, um, that they're too rigid, that they're too old to train, that their competence is declining and it's questionable, uh, that they're less creative compared to younger workers and so forth. Um, and so often the standard is, oh, well, people uh, of 40 years of age and older are often compared to 30 year olds. And uh, the comparison of uh, the older worker is seen as inflexible or they're resistant to change. So they don't get as much feedback from their managers and they consequently get less intention, less engagement, less guidance and so forth. Um, and what often happens to many uh, older workers with their careers is as they age or if they're in a place for a while and older workers and their experience and skills aren't valued, then they get less training. They're simply not enrolled in training uh, to update skills because some managers might think it's simply not worth the effort. And it, it's sort of a push uh, on many people to get them to retire so that uh, management or the particular person who seems to think it's uh, an issue uh, can get them to do it without any controversy, to get them to leave. Um, 
the problem is today is that times are not that good. Uh, anytime there's some stress in the economic system, uh, people need their jobs, especially. And so these older workers need those jobs and they're not going to leave the workforce. For many of them, trying to live on social security if they're getting it isn't, uh, isn't enough. They really want and they really need that job. So we can underestimate this career impact of being older. Um, often older persons are simply trapped in a scenario where they can't or are not allowed to get their obsolete skills updated. And uh, even when they show that they're eager to do so. Uh, so it's very frustrating for uh, older persons in that sense, uh, dealing with uh, having a job, let alone a career. Uh, and so when we really do compare older persons to 30 year olds, their promotion active uh, opportunities are slim. And so the stereotypes uh, about being old come into play. And there are so many false assumptions uh, about the competence and creativity and flexibility of older persons. Um, many white collar workers are older persons today because they are not retiring and they are not dying off as early and they're not interested in retiring soon. And uh, many uh, because of economic concessions or because they just like their jobs or they like working. Uh, are postponing retiring or stopping work uh, for as long as their health holds out. Um, the research shows that certainly you change jobs less often as you get old. Now the third age is interesting. Uh, some researchers have divided up people into ages. Um, youth is the first age, the first 30 years. Middle age is the second age the second 30 years. And old age is the third 30 years from 60 to 90. So most people would agree that uh, a lot of persons do mellow somewhat with age. Um, of course, there are plenty of individual differences out there with that. Uh, but for many of us, we might become less self-absorbed um, and we might develop a need to pass something on or contribute something uh, or to keep busy uh, for that matter. Uh, and so we often, uh, people who are older tend to volunteer and so forth. And that those years from 60 to 90 are really a time to continue to grow and learn and so forth. And uh, I almost all older persons that you talk to would certainly agree and would argue that uh, they ought to be valued more, that American culture tends not to value the older person as much. Uh, an older person certainly would like to be valued for the, their uh, knowledge and experience. They would like to be looked at as a source of some wisdom and uh, receive some support and uh, have it acknowledged that uh, they do have some vitality in American culture. Okay, folks, that's all I wanted to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.